First item on the agenda is invocation pledge of allegiance to the U.S. and Texas flag. Chapter G.H. Jones and Commissioner Washington. Folks, only tell about us to move our Jehovah's Witnesses. Thank you. Second item on the agenda is call for citizens' input and our concerns. Could I introduce uh, somebody to the room real quick? Uh, this is Chris Coffey. He's our new juvenile attention center superintendent. He started last week. Uh, forgive my voice. I don't think I can hear I've got some kind of cold going on. But I haven't broke my perfect attendance record. That's not even that bad. Anyway, Chris has about 23 years of experience in juvenile detention. I've known him for 20 years. He worked in Dallas County as a, as a detention officer supervisor and manager of the system superintendent. He's on the board of the Texas Juvenile Attention Association. So very knowledgeable, very experienced in juvenile attention matter. I think he's going to do an outstanding job. Just want to visit everybody. Well, welcome. Well, welcome. welcome. Judge and commissioners and others in attendance, our presentation this morning provides the results of the third complete economic impact study done for the Brazos County Exposition Complex. Specifically, it covers FY 2015, October the 1st through September 30th, 2015, which was our eighth year of actual operation. That's kind of hard to believe. As you know, the expo officially opened in October 2007 so relatively speaking, we still remain very young in the event facility industry. Since the Expo's business is in a continued growth pattern now and will be in the future, the economic impact created will continue to grow significantly. Therefore, a new economic impact study will be completed as we proceed forward each year or at least every other year. It's, in, it's very important to note that each year can become skewed based on the health of the overall economy. After completing the presentation, Dr. Dudensing will answer a few questions, if any, from members of the court, and then they will, will move out to the atrium, as we usually do, for any additional questions from others. At this time, I would like to introduce the principal investigator, Dr. Rebecca Dudensing, assistant professor in extension economist, community economic development, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. And while she is coming up, uh, I'm gonna pass out to uh, the judge and commissioners a copy of the slides that she's gonna show in his front and back. Thank you, Tom. All right, good morning, everyone. Morning, judge, commissioners. As, as Tom mentioned, this is the, um, the third full study that we have done. Uh, we actually started doing these back in 2012, and that was a partial year ramping up, and we didn't have enough to start doing averages yet. Um, and so we're excited to be presenting these numbers. And so the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of run through the events and attendance over FY 2015. And so we see uh, the total 
number of events, to the type count, and there for 2015 was 160 events, including the Brazos Valley Fair. I'm going to ask you to please consider that next line up, which is the bolded total line um, before the fair, so 159 events. Reason being, some of you may remember that last year there was not a fair during the fiscal year, so, so not in 2015, but in 2014 when we were presenting that information. The fair had moved just enough, just on the other side of the fiscal year break, and so I want to compare apples and apples. So 159 events in, in fiscal year 2015, over 305 out of 365 possible days of the year, um, 72,400 attendees. That includes both no, local and non-local, and then person days, which is not just if you did the math there and said, well, 48 in horse shows times uh, 3765, you're not going to get 12,000 days. We adjust that down. Um, some people are going to be there every day. Some people are going to be there multiple days. Uh, so person days across all of the events last year, 132,000. Uh, and so for some perspective there, um, last year the number that I reported was 115,665 jobs. So 14% growth in person days out at the expo over the past year. Um, one thing that I want to mention is, you know, when we do these studies, particularly in extension as a community development economist, we talk a lot about the but-for principle. We might, and the extension people over here, we go into a community and we hope to do good work and get some things started, um, but we can't take credit for what the community does down the line. And so when we're trying to figure out, well, what was our impact, what is the but-for? If we hadn't gone out and done this event, would that have happened? And, and if we can say, gosh, we can really see that this particular event, even though we give credit to everybody else who was doing the work, but that really started with this. So when it comes to the Expo Center, when I think of the but for uh, principle, I, I really think of those top four or five lines, though, horse shows down through rodeos and outdoor events. In Brazos County, you know, we do have a little bit of horse show space, um, some smaller facilities and so forth, but really those are the things, if you want a rodeo in Brazos County, if you want a big horse show, you're going out to the expo. There's just really not that many other places that you're going to go, uh, particularly to find the facilities and, and the quality that you're going to have there. And so those for me are really our but for principle. And when we look at the total attendance days over um, those events, the horse shows through the rodeos, that is 63,000 of those 132,000 days or 47% of the person days out there. Now we go ahead and we consider on down through conferences and career fairs. Yes, you can have a conference somewhere else in town, but that's bringing new money in and that's what we're really concerned about in an economic impact study is have we brought people's money, people who don't live in Brazos County, have we brought their money in and got them to spend it here. So we go down through conferences and uh, career fairs and trade shows in that. We've realized that many of the meetings and seminars, educational events, some of those are bringing in outside people, uh, but a lot of those are facilitating uh, local events. So down through the trade shows, we've got 60% of the person days are happening in those things that are bringing money into the economy like that, um, or about 79,000 of the person days. And also when we look at that, that top group, the but for group, we're looking at 90% of the spending. So I'm going to go ahead and start jumping into um, economics here, but of all that money that we bring in, um, that we consider, we don't bring it in, the expo brings these people in to spend in, but the money that we're considering, which is down through the trade shows, um, what people are spending there, 90% of that is coming from those first four types of events. All right, so I want to go ahead and... I'm going to ruin my own show. I want to get to the bottom line before we start talking about differences in spending, uh, which is something that Tom mentioned this year. So I want you to know overall spending and economic impacts are up this year over last year. But I want to spend a little bit of time talking about what this looks like and why it is that we're doing an average survey and why we're surveying every year. You can see there in the first group of bars, is it attached to the, the if I push a button here, is that what makes yes. the, whoop. Well, I'll just use, oh, okay, I'm not really sure what I saw. I'm sorry, I'm a professional. Can you tell? <laughs> Using someone else's mouse is um, yeah, always interesting. Yeah, shaky here, too. Well, the, I just won't point. Y'all can see. That's totally fine. Um, but this is the latest. Oh, there's, I'm I thought sorry. that was just I a pen. Was, yeah. Perfect. Right. Thanks, Candy. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay, so you can see there um, on the horse shows that over the last few years, um, 
starting with the red bar. So 2012 is on there. That's not part of this year's average. Uh, that We're doing a three-year average. If you get back too far, even though I'm adjusting for inflation each year, if you get back too far, spending just looks different. Plus, you'll see that 2012 year, um, those numbers are, are a little bit different compared to some of the things, and that's because we were still in a ramp-up phase. But you can see the first year that's in this um, is the 2013 that we're going to be having that three-year average, and we've got some high expenditures there, and it continues to fall over the horse shows. Um, and this year is just a little bit lower than last year, this year being the, uh, the purple bar compared to uh, FY14, which is green. So our average, the teal bar, is, is, of course, there in the middle. Livestock shows have been a little more consistent over time. That You can see that uh, 20, wow, I'm a mess with this thing. 2013, 2013 um, fell in 2014 and back up in 2015. The rodeos are really what I want to look at because that is going to make a difference in, in some of the parts of this study today. And we went from 2014, we reported last year, $118, uh, or sorry, $137 down to $86. So that $50 person day difference over 23,000 people, that makes a dent. And so that's why we use an average, right? Because we want the survey out there um, doing with different groups every year. And the expo is very good about that, picking different groups that they survey every year. They're not going to be surveying the same group. Well, there are some groups that spend a lot of money. There are some groups, and we you don't even necessarily know this going in. Um, you can make some guesses, but sometimes you're wrong, that don't spend very much money and it's important to hit all of those and so you know even though we're doing several events a year so we have a little bit of an array within years when we take three years of those events of inflation adjusted we have a pretty good array of what that looks like so this year you can see you know it dropped off fifty dollars a person based on um, the rodeos which includes ropings and barrel racings as well in that category there was just less spending in what was um, what was surveyed this year that's okay our average came down a little that's why we use the average next year you know, that could be way up, right? We had that in the conferences, too. We had, um, back in 2013, there was one conference that came in. They spent a lot. In 2013, the conferences spent well below normal. Uh, that conference, even just looking at it, looked like, wow, these guys are just not big spenders. Um, part of that had to do with it was a semi-regional conference, and so a lot of those people were going home at night, even though they weren't local to the county. But so you can see that there's a lot of bouncing around that goes on in there. Um, and so there are some reasons, as Tom mentioned, for that variation, and um, those include the economy, for one thing, and I'm going to show a slide here in a second where we're going to talk about some of those things. We cannot control what the economy is doing and how people are reacting to it, and as I mentioned, it also depends on, on what's being surveyed, and we want that broader way. If we didn't ever show that people were dropping, you should be suspicious, and that, well, they're not capturing or they're being very selective in what they're surveying. So that, I think, is actually good news rather than bad news. All right, so getting into that rodeo spending here just a little bit so you can kind of see where that's going. Uh, the first person day um, having fallen over the last few years for rodeos just based on, on what's being surveyed and in 2015 looking a little bit lower. And there's some things I want to point out within that. And first of all, across the board in every category this year, gas decreased. And I don't think that should be a surprise to us. And in theory, that should be a good thing. Over the whole entire year, gas prices have been falling. So we think, as economists, that if we have a little bit less that we have to pay for gas, we should be spending that elsewhere. And if we've already got, you know, hey, I'm going to spend $100 when I travel, and I don't have to spend that $100 or 10 of it on gas, well, now I can spend a little more nicer hotel, eat in a nicer place, maybe do a little more shopping. That's how it's supposed to go. In reality... This economy has proven difficult. There's a cotton economist in another state, and, and he's done work predicting that given low gas prices, given energy prices, Americans should have X amount more money to spend, and it's, it's not an insignificant amount over the year, and that you know a certain proportion of this should have gone to close. Has not happened. Has not happened for at least two years. Americans are very skittish right now. Um, furthermore, we don't know what 2016 is going to bring. It hasn't started off very well. Um, and it, it, I don't have a lot of confidence. I'm not a forecaster, um, but the things that I'm hearing, the things that we're seeing, a lot of uncertainty in 2016. So we really don't want to, we don't know what these numbers are going to look like going into the future. And we, but we do know that people don't always react as we think. Um, so even though there's lower gas spending, there's not been commensurately more spending in other areas. 
I need to mention as well, it looks here like lodging has fallen. Um, that's only in this category. So lodging has fallen over time for rodeos, but that has not been true. It's actually been up in livestock conferences and horse shows in each one of those categories. And yeah, so in each one of those four categories that we report, this is the only category where lodging has actually fallen. Okay, so the last slide um, that I want to talk about a little bit of, you know, how this spending is breaking down and what we're looking at. And here we're looking at three horse shows that were surveyed this year in fiscal year 2015. And you can see that there's a big difference. So not only is there that year-to-year -year jump that we showed on that, um, on that column graph earlier, but here in this chart we see that you know, there's also a huge difference between shows. Not only that, there's a difference in terms of um, the percentage. So in column in B, I'm just not good with this thing, I'm sorry. In B, the orange is access, and uh, the access shows access fees for horse show B were very, very large. If it hadn't been for that, the spending would have been a little bit more normalized. Um, but we have to keep in mind, not all access fees stay within the county, but some of those access fees do stay within the county, particularly for some types of organizations that um, may do organizing locally, certain breed associations and stuff that we have that are doing things here. Uh, furthermore, the breakdown there in, um, in food and lodging, particularly if you look at C and B, um, you can see that, sh or sorry, A and, and C, you can see that A was spending a little bit less on lodging and, and a little bit more on food proportionally than C was. But I think what's interesting to point out, you know, I, I think sometimes we get tempted to think, well, gosh, we know exactly what all these people are spending. We could pick winners. We could get the kind of people in here that we want to see um, and, and that would spend the way we want them to spend. And so I, I think it's helpful to point out that Horse Show B and Horse Show C are the same organization putting on a show in two different months. So we, we can't necessarily make those guesses. You would hope that you could, right, with the kind of data that these guys are collecting, but unfortunately that's just not possible. So, uh, Judge and Commissioner, I think you've seen this slide four years in a row. Um, some of you out in the audience as well. Um, but it's just really important before we get into the economic impacts, which is the, the bulk of what we want to talk about today, that everyone knows what we mean. And so when we pop up on a slide that it says direct spending, that is spending by visitors. Um, and what we're reporting in the slides is actually not total visitor spending, which includes the access fees, but it is visitor spending including only the portion of the access fees that are spent within Brazos County. So when we know that, um, say, AQHA, American Quarter Horse Association, has organized something out of Amarillo, we take those access fees out and say, you know what, probably most of them are being spent on operations in Amarillo. So visitor spending, it's not the spending by the expo. We're not um, looking at expo spending here. We're looking at visitor spending coming into the county. The indirect is business to business spending, and then the induced spending is spending by employees um, in, in all of those rounds. So each one of those businesses in the indirect has employees, and those employees are spending money back buying groceries and food and electricity in our economy. All right, and in our top row, um, you are going to see across the slides that we have here today, the tables, output, which is basically just gross sales. So when we ask people, what did you spend in Brazos County? They're going to look at their receipt and say, I spent $100, and that's what they're going to put on the line. Value added is GDP. Labor income is the wages, proprietor's income, uh, so compensation to people working in the economy, and then, of course, um, employment, which includes both full and part-time jobs. It's not FTEs. It's just a job is a job. And as I always like to point out as well that value-added or GDP is a part of output. You know, we have cost of goods sold, and then we have value-added. So value-added is part of output. Labor income is part of value-added. Please don't add those together. I occasionally have reviewed journal articles from people who are in my profession and they've chosen to add those together and you just can't um, because those are already a component of output. All right, so once again, we're only looking at non-local expenditures. We're only interested in seeing what money people are bringing into the economy. Certainly when people from Brazos County go out and enjoy an expo event, they may spend some money, but chances are they would have spent that same money, hopefully here in the county doing something else. So we're really looking at the impact of people coming into the counties. On the top row, the direct effect, again, is what people are spending in the economy while we're here. And then the bottom row is the sum of the direct, indirect, and induced effects, or the total effect in the economy. So the $733,000 that are being spent on horse shows by all people who are out there um, visiting our horse shows is um, just a little over a million dollars and 11 jobs. Oops, we're not going. 
there we go. Livestock shows, which again, if you remember, they had a really good year. Um, they were up this year in terms of total spending relative to last year. Although I am reporting uh, average spending, if this is a three-year average is what you're seeing, but I, but I can tell you that livestock shows were spending more than they have. Um, and so they were spending $1.2 million. And out of that, $1.6 million in economic impact and 17, almost 18 jobs. This was the first year that the Expo had a dog show. And um, I think they were kind of interested to see how that was going to go exactly. And it's kind of cool because they use a lot of space. They use both indoor and outdoor space for the dog shows. And this was one event. And so we've got here $450,000 in economic impacts, almost half a million dollars from a single event. And there are additional dog shows um, that have been scheduled out there both this year and looking forward. Well, maybe not this year, but at least looking forward. And so I think that's exciting because when you see this kind of output from one event, um, that, that's pretty cool to see. All right, so we've talked a little bit about rodeos and the changes in spending um, this year relative to last year. And um, so $1.8 million was spent out there, and that's the average. So we're looking at roughly $122 per person, um, whereas the, the 137 was a little bit lower than the 144 that had been spent in 2015. And so if we think about, gosh, the difference in, in that surveying and the difference um, in the economy and so forth, if we had been using the 137, there would be an extra million. It would be 2.7 million rather than 1.7 um, million, which is what, we, what we've brought it down to. So uh, again, that, that really does make a difference, and yet it is the strongest category. It remains, uh, this is, as you look through all of these, this is the highest category, 1.8 million in direct output and 2.6 million in economic impact and 27 jobs. All right, conferences and career fairs. Uh, 400 in spending and 577,600 in economic output and six jobs there. I'm scrolling. I'm afraid it's going to happen all at once. Just click. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, okay, so across all of the non-private expo events, again, um, we, you know, we know that this is a conservative estimate because I'm, I'm I told him yesterday when I was meeting with him, I said, I'm pretty hard on you. When I look at a rodeo, I'm like, mm, no, nope, all these cowboys were not there all of these days. And I put a formula in um, that says, you know, based on what we know, how many cowboys were probably there, you know, a couple of them, you know, well, this group was there two days and probably this group got to stay a couple extra days. Um, so we're pretty hard on it in terms of those um, per person days. And then we don't include things like weddings, unless you would like me to come survey your wedding or Joe Beth to come survey your wedding. Um, meetings and other things. I mean, a lot of those, those things are bringing in people. You know, we know there's a lot of out-of-town people coming in for those weddings. There again, we've got the but-for principle, right, though? Is it just the expo that they want to have a wedding at, or are there some other draws to College Station why they're really having that wedding? The same thing with some of our local meetings and educational events. But $4.4 million in total spending out there, resulting in $6.3 million. This is the three-year average um, in terms of how that spending was calculated. $6.3 million in economic output, which is their best year yet in any of these, and 68 jobs. Now I'm going to leave you with this slide here, um, just showing the year-over-year -year changes. 2013 was the first year that we had a full um, group of information, so there's nothing to compare it to, but $5.1 million in output. 11%, uh, almost 12% growth into 2014 to 5.7, and 2015, another 10% growth, looking at 6.3 million in the Brazos County economy and 60, uh, 68 jobs. Are there any questions? How do you figure the jobs that the brains has your... Mm -hmm. Well, I use the in-plan model, uh, which there are a few models out there. The in-plan model is, is very respected. It has a, a fixed relationship um, with the jobs. And so each job, so when you look at the jobs multiplier, it's per million dollars of direct spending. So it will say it's 2.3 jobs per million job dollars of direct spending in a specific industry. So if you have a million dollars in restaurant, it might be... 3.5 because it takes a lot of people in a restaurant. If you have um, some type of service that is very computer-based and there's not, it might be 1.7 jobs. And so for each dollar of output, there is in each round of that expenditure, both the direct expenditure and then each of the indirect rounds. There, when I run a model, there may be 13 rounds of expenditure while that money cycles through the economy. And every time it cycles through, we lose a little bit. There's leakage elsewhere. 
but it's assigning, you know, per the, do per the dollars in each industry. And then that is the sum of all of the, the jobs that are in an industry, which is why it doesn't look much, even though there's growth and output there, that may be reassigned from year to year. You remember that slide where, um, you know, lodging was really large on one of those lines and it was a smaller portion of another and restaurants were a little bit larger. So that relationship, the proportion of, of the money that's going into each of those individual industries affects um, how those jobs look. But it is a fixed relationship. you're going over all this and you're trying to put all this data together and that do you look at the events say let's say the horse show events where you have the, the barrel racing and the roping and the rodeos uh, which ones are are spectator events and which ones are not to what comes in is spectator wise right they will um, they will send me a list of there were this many people who attended each of these events and a lot of times if there's some question about that, they will say, you know, we know that there were um, 300, like one event that they had that I, that I happen to remember where there were 300 participants and there were 3,500 3, attendees. Well, I, in, in the model, there is an assumption that, um, and it goes by event, and we work back and forth on this as well because each event could be different. And if there, so what proportion of those uh, 3,500 people were probably local? Well, probably a high proportion, right? So most of that gets assigned local, and I actually do calculations for what is spent by locals as well. I just don't happen to present it. Um, so we assign and we say, okay, well, most of these 3,500 people were local, and you know, a small portion of them may have been visiting from outside the county because, of course, it's, you know, to, I live in Burleson County. I spend a lot of time shopping and spending money and doing events in Brazos County. Um, but my money is still coming coming into the economy. Um, and then we take, okay, so how, what percent of the people who are participating are probably local? And we have that breakdown from our surveys. And so we use a lot of different sources to figure out who's local and who's not. And, yeah, we absolutely don't let – you know, so if on a rodeo there are, you know, 350 people coming and it's a five-day event – well, we know that there was 3,500 people that came over all those days. They don't get to be there for 3,500 times five. They get to be there for 3,500 person days. And then some of those cowboys get to be there for more than five days. And that's how we set up the person days. Thank you, Dr. Okay. Thank you. No more questions. Uh, we certainly appreciate the work you've done. I think we all recognize what goes on out there and what the impact is, but it's nice to see it in numbers, you know. And, and I'm glad that the staff uh, at Expo is able to provide you with the information that you need to be able to run those numbers. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, and I think with the, uh, the, the next expansion, which will uh, add more of the, these outside the stall barns and another stall barn and all will give us the capacity to be able to bring in the bigger uh, horse shows that we have not been able to bring in because we just didn't have enough stalls out there and, and they maybe even have two or three uh, events going on at the same time because of the size, which is, and that expansion is going to be paid for with hotel occupancy tax, which is an appropriate use of the hotel occupancy tax just to help put heads in place. We appreciate your work on this and okay. providing us with the information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tom, do you have anything else you want to add? No, I mean, unless somebody has a question, I think we'd be happy to, to answer it. Okay. All right. We will move on to <coughs> consider and take action on agenda items 4 through 18. Number four is Proclamation 16-002, Walk Across Texas. Okay. There's May 2nd discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Let me read the proclamation. <clears throat> Brazos County Walk Across Texas 2016. It's never too late to start an active lifestyle, no matter how old you are or how unfit you feel or how long you've been inactive. 
Research shows that starting a more active lifestyle now through regular, moderate <clears throat> intensity activity can make you healthier and improve your quality of life. Regular, <clears throat> whereas regular physical, physical activity substantially reduces the risk of dying of coronary heart disease, the nation's leading cause of death, and decreases the risk of stroke, <clears throat> colon cancer, diabetes, and high blood pressure whereas regular physical activity also helps to control weight, contributes to the healthy bones, muscles, and joints, and reduces symptoms of anxiety and depression, and is associated with fewer hospitalizations, phys physician visits, and medications, whereas physical activity needs, to be, needs not to be strenuous to be beneficial. People of all ages and benef benefit from participating in regular, moderate intensity physical activity, such as 30 minutes of brisk wa uh, walking five or more times a week, whereas Walk Across Texas in its eight-week physical activity program with one goal to increase your physical activity level, Walk Across Texas uses friendly competition and group support to encourage adults and adolescents to become physically active. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that I, Dwayne Peters, Brazos County Judge, do hereby proclaim February 6th to April 2nd, 2016, as eight weeks of fun, fitness, and urge all Brazos County citizens to participate in Walk Across Texas and increase their physical activity level. Thank you. Y'all want to speak? Yeah. Okay. Um, good morning to our judge and our commissioners, to everyone in the room. Um, uh, my name is Flora Williams. I'm the proud Brazos County Family and Consignment consumer science extension agent and I oversee the walk across Texas task force and I have a few of the members here with with me and I want them to introduce tell you who they are what agency they're with and their role on our task force hi my name is Priscilla Hammond I'm the better living for Texans extension assistant and I'm a committee member on the task force Good morning, my name is Sarah Mendez. Um, I'm the Health Education Director at the Brazos County Health Department, um, but I also serve as the co-chair of Walk Across Texas, and we are encouraging um, the community to participate as well as all Brazos County employees. Uh, we would like for employees to get their teams together as departments, family, friends. Uh, we have a really gaudy uh, golden shoe type trophy that's actually right now at Juvenile Services because they won last year, and so we'll be getting that back from them um, and maybe re, um, reissue it to them I see Dr. Vance back there um, but uh, we really encourage all of our um, employees to participate in this great program uh, Christy Johnson is my intern this semester and she's going to be helping all of the county employee teams uh, getting you know them involved and uh, logging in miles so thank you and I'm Nicole Vargas and I'm the health educator at the Brazos County Health Department so I'll be helping out Tara with all the great things that we're doing with Walk Across Texas. Thank you. And just in closing I want to say that um, this is an exciting year for Walk Across Texas. Walk Across Texas is celebrating its 20th birthday um, and it's unique here in Brazos County because it's the 20th year for the overall program but 19 years in Brazos County so next year we'll have our big 20-year celebration again so we'll have two 20-year celebrations um, and also I just want to recognize our intern with um, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension um, Leanne the last name. But I really hope that each of you will participate. Our kickoff event is February the 6th at Post Oak Mall, and we want you to come and join in because this year we're going to make it really special since we are celebrating the 20th year. It's going to be at 10 o'clock in front of the J.C. Penny entrance. So to come on in the inside, and we'll be right there in that hallway. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right. Okay. Thank you all. Okay, you're welcome. Five, reappointment of Mark Malsenberger and Tammy Tyner to the Board of Trustees of the Members of the Mental Health Mental Retardation Authority of Brazos Valley. Term appointments is March 1st, 2016 through March 28, 2018. Move for approval. Second. Motion made a second. Did I say that? February 28th. February 28th, 2018. Motion is second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Six, 
six is payment authorization to brand the driver in the amount of four hundred twenty seven dollars and three cents to reimburse the homeowner at eighteen two nine seven Wigton Trail Drive College Station for replacement of roadside mailbox damage during road construction of Wigton Trail. Second. Motion made second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Number seven is request to allocate funds to purchase ID card printer for the Human Resources Department. Printers needed to go with new time clocks used by many of the departments. Move for approval. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Of interlocal agreement of Brazos County and City of Frisco, Texas. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. Number nine is request for information technology to approve an amended interlocal agreement with City of Bryan for law enforcement records management system. Second. Motion made and second. Uh, here, you want to speak on that? Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Eric Caldwell with the Information Technology Department. Um, <clears throat> so you you may remember that back in uh, May of last year, Commissioner's Court approved. Uh, an interlocal agreement uh, with the city of Bryan to acquire uh, a records management system for our law enforcement. Um, at the same time, we approved the, the contract and actually got started on that project. We were, we were working to acquire um, a product called Total Enforcement. Not long after we got in, into that project in, in September of last year, we learned that the vendor, uh, Tritech, um, had it gone out and acquired yet another records management system uh, so that at this point they owned three distinct records management <coughs> systems. Um, they were kind enough to, to uh, foreshadow for us that they were going to start putting their development efforts into this more recently acquired records management system, focusing development on that for smaller agencies and focusing continued development on their flagship product for the larger agencies such as Brazos County to the um, uh, to the exclusion of additional development on the product that we had contracted to acquire. So consequently that meant that we were buying into a dead-end product. Um, so at that point uh, we, we backed up, kind of regrouped, uh, took a look at their flagship product which we believe is uh, uh, at least as uh, capable as the one that we were trying to acquire and, and, and more so in fact. So we took a look at that product and uh, the vendor agreed to sell us that same product at the already contracted price. Um, and given um, our knowledge of others who had acquired this records management system uh, rather recently, including College Station, we realized that we were getting this uh, product at a at a very uh, reduced rate. So um, what we're what we're wanting to do now is we're wanting to amend the interlocal agreement this morning uh, to reflect that we are no longer going to be working to acquire the total enforcement product, but instead we're going to be working to acquire the Inform flagship product, and then um, probably in um, March, I'm targeting the, a date of March the 22nd, we're going to be coming back to Commissioner's Court asking for you to approve the new contract for this new records management system. That contract will have a preamble in it that will dissolve the current contract. Uh, at the same time, uh, I'm going to ask you to approve the system purchase agreement for that new product. Uh, the statement of work necessary to implement that product. Um, and we're going to ask for a budget amendment to, uh, to get uh, some additional monies for a couple of additional uh, modules 
that we had not already contracted for. This new flagship records management system that we're, we're wanting to acquire now uh, has um, related to it, uh, there is an evidence module uh, that we want to acquire. <coughs> there is an intelligence module that we want to acquire. And then there is a, a reporting amalgamation system that we want to acquire. And so uh, to foreshadow for you, uh, we're going to be asking for an additional $33,000. Um, the, 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 the plus side is that um, in, in acquiring the evidence module, we're going to wind up migrating away from an evidence module that we're currently using. And so consequently, we're going to wind up saving almost $7,000 per year in annual support cost on that product. So there's some offsets uh, there that will um, help reduce the impact of that budget amendment request that we're going to come to you for. So again, this morning, what we're asking is that you approve this amended interlocal agreement to reflect that we're wanting to acquire the new flagship product in lieu of this dead-end product that we contracted for in May. And we're going to be coming back to you in March with the rest of the contract documents. Do you have any idea, uh, since it sounds like uh, three big A's, College Station, Bryan, and Bradford County, will all have the same RMS long term, will that have any impact? You, you mentioned evidence uh, as far as the DA's office and uh, county attorney's office about being able to share that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I know that's been a hope a long time that we mm -hmm. can all get on the same program and make that transfer of information uh, between the prosecutors and, and all of the law enforcement agencies. Does that kind of look like it? That, right. So this, you know, and it, and it remains, to, remains to be seen whether or not we can accomplish this. But given that that has been a goal uh, for so long, uh, we believe that that uh, this is somewhat fortuitous in that planets seem to be lining up and there may be an opportunity to get all of the regional agencies together on the same records management system and then from there we can be bringing in prosecutors and things of that nature. But okay. All right. Well, I, I mean, I certainly hope, I know that's been something we've hoped for. Yes, Hopefully indeed. We make all that work. Okay. All right. Thank you, Eric. I think we have a motion and a second, but I don't believe we've taken a vote. Is that correct? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Not a motion carries. Number 10 is a bid contract number 2016-150R, fencing supplies for the new items that followed. Uh, and this is a correction from, uh, I believe this agenda item was on the agenda last week, the week before, so it was not correct the way it was done, so we're, we're redoing that. A is Woodson Wholesale Inc. Items 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 22. B is Bell Fence Supply Items 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 18, 19, 20, and 21. And C is no award for item 17. <coughs> Consideration and the, the agenda item says award of RFP 2016-19 OPEB trust services, but I think uh, to negotiate to decide who we're going to negotiate with for the OPEB trust services rather than an award of the bid. Uh, Bill, you want to give us yep. a little? Uh, I want to start by reading uh, the documents in my file. Um, the, the correction uh, uh, for uh, the uh, records of the court is uh, approval to negotiate a contract with the OPEB trust services vendor and reappoint or appointment of a negotiation team. And what I want to uh, just briefly uh, remind the court about the, the, the past um, introductions to these two firms and that the OPEB is essentially a uh, an endowment uh, to allow the county to uh, first of all comply with the gas fee regulations and also to fund its retired uh, employees uh, uh, for health 
and other uh, benefits. Uh, so we've we've seen the calculations that this amount becomes very very large in the future, and so now is the time uh, for the county to begin that. And so we have had a RFQ, uh, which was answered by two companies with very different philosophical ideas. And those two companies made presentations to the commissioner's court in a uh, in a forum. And now uh, I'm going to ask the commissioners to give. Uh, me guidance uh, with a uh, agenda vote on the companies to negotiate with. And I wanted to, to kind of briefly uh, remind the commissioners about the companies that we spoke to. Both of these are very uh, knowledgeable companies. One is a single employer uh, benefit program, the other is a multi employer benefit program. And kind of jog the commissioner's memory. I have uh, photographs of the, the, those people who made those presentations. A question real quick. Charles, should this have been listed as an RFQ or is RFP correct? Actually, it's RFQ. That's what I thought. I just wanted to make a note for the Okay. And so uh, at this point, uh, there's been uh, no discussions of any pricing, any uh, fees that would be required by these two companies. So I, I am asked the commissioner report to appoint a negotiating team, and uh, that team I'm going to recommend to the commissioner would be uh, the county judge, the purchasing agent, and myself uh, to negotiate a price with uh, this company and to bring that back to the commissioner. Okay, so, so we. and the commissioners can either vote that up or vote that down. I move. And I'll second the motion. Okay. PSM. Motion has been made and seconded to approve to negotiate with PFM uh, for the OPEF contract. Do we want to include in there the negotiating team? Uh, yes, to include the negotiating team with Judge uh, Peters, uh, purchasing agent Mr. Wendt, Legal representation. Uh, I'll build it on. Okay, you want to include that in your motion? I approve that in your motion. Judge Peters, Charles Wendt, and our attorney Bill Ballard will represent the county in negotiations. All right. Motion's been made and seconded to pick PFM to negotiate with first. Special warranty deeds for Roberto and Jose Garcia for 0.275 acre tract of land to be used in right away with widening for Dick Elliott Road, sites located for C2. Move for approval. Second. Motion made. Second for discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No motion carries. Number 13 is tax refund application for the following A. Guaranteed bank trust payment. In era, uh, $1,337.22. Uh, $1 B, Estate of Marilyn Shepherd, overpayment of $6.06. And C, Sharon Wagner, overpayment of $14.06. I move approval A through C. Motion made, second in discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Budget amendments. Budget amendments FY 15 slash 16, 18.1 through 18.6. Second. Motion made second discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Motion change status. Second. Motion made second discussion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Number 16, payment plan. 
claims, claim to be paid by Brazos County, claim number 20 is announcement of interest items for possible future agenda topics. Just hope so we can get a team up for uh, maybe the commissioner's course to uh, get one and walk across Texas and see what you think. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other announcement of interest items for possible future agenda topics? I wasn't in motion with it. This is a non-action item. <laughs> uh, number 21 is called for citizens' input and our concerns. We will go back up to number 17 and convening uh, the following executive sessions. A executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code 551.074 to discuss the Appointment, employment, evaluation, reassignment duties, and discipline, dismi dismissal of the position of risk manager, and then B is executive session pursuant to Texas Government Code 551.072 to discuss real property times 1052. And the court candy um, for the risk manager will be Jennifer and Bill. see anybody else that we need to have in there. Uh, I don't believe we need anybody else for the real property.